Can you tell me the story of how Jesus is born? So, like, first an angel appeared and she said to Mary that um, there was good news because she was going to have a baby named Jesus. Mary drove his job to Bethlehem. Caesar had ordered everybody to go back to their hometown. There wasn't any room for them in the, in the, um, where you have like the babies. And then they found a barn. Mary and Joseph used the manger to put their baby in as a crib. Because it's a great place for where he can be safe to be born. One night, our shepherds were like out, out on this place. And the angels came up to them, and it was like really bright for them. And he said, fear not, for there is good news. A baby has been born, and his name is Jesus. Singing glory in the highest peace on earth, in whom his favor will rest. The wise men saw the star, and they followed it, and they found Jesus, the baby Jesus. They came to give him presents, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Why do we celebrate Christmas? <clears throat> I know. Because it's Jesus' birthday. Yep, I was going to say that. Yeah, you can give the kids some love. That was awesome. Well, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Amen, Amen to that. Hey, good morning to you here in the worship center. I also want to say, as Pastor Travis did, but I also want to say good morning to those in our venue, those in our gym. Of course, joining us online, hello to you. I want to say this to everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. They say that this is the most wonderful time of the year. And I'm like, do you even know what summer is? It doesn't get above freezing and it's dark at five o'clock. The most wonderful time of the year, most wonderful holiday. I'm with you on that. I think this is the most wonderful holiday. We all know there is something special and magical about Christmas. But I think we need to take a moment and acknowledge that. I think for, for some people who are gathered with us and maybe online, you're maybe a little fearful of Christmas this year. Because this is the first Christmas that you get to have without a loved one that you lost this year. And so maybe you approach Christmas with a little bit of fear. And let me just say this to you and to everyone. Christmas can still be good because it is good. There's good to be known. There's good to be had. There's good to be experienced. This morning we're going to read a passage when the angel announces to the shepherds the good news that Jesus has been born. And with that announcement, the angel starts with this wonderful phrase, fear not. Fear not. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to go ahead and turn to Luke chapter 2. If you use the Bibles that we provided, that's on page 1029. If I haven't said so yet, my name is Pastor Ryan. I'm the lead pastor here. If I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, I would love to make that happen today. If you'd want to stick around, I'd love to talk with you. So we're going to Read Luke chapter 2 as we continue our sermon series, Christmas. Good news, great joy, all people. And as Pastor Nate said last week, we didn't exactly dip, dip too deep into the creative bowl for this one. We just said, hey, it's 2020. Let's just keep it simple. We'll keep it safe. Let's just go for the heart of Christmas. Good news, great joy, all people. So Luke chapter 2, follow along as I read verses 8 to 14. Here we go. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace 
among those with whom he is pleased. Amen. This is God's word, everyone. Let's pray, and we'll get started. Father God of glory, we do thank you for this Christmas, not because it's a great holiday, but because Christmas is when peace has truly come into the world, when your glory can be seen, when your salvation can be known. And I would pray this morning that you would be with us by the power of your Spirit as we give attention to your word and what it means for our lives. And God of glory, we thank you for these things that we pray in your Son's name. Amen and amen. So the freedom of religion is one of our fundamental freedoms here in America. And it's a freedom that I want to see remain intact. And so when I say the words Merry Christmas, that's not hate speech towards other holidays. That's just me being really specific. Merry Christmas. If a Muslim said to me, Happy Ramadan, thank you. I mean, I'm not going to celebrate it, but thank you. Likewise, when I go to maybe a trendy coffee shop and they're trying to be politically correct and I get a coffee cup and it says Happy Hanukkah on it, thank you. Good coffee still inside. But the reason that I choose to say Merry Christmas is because I don't want Christmas to just be another holiday on the shelf of December. I think there is something qualitatively different about Christmas that everyone needs to hear. And so, as we look at our passage today, I think we're going to continue to see this message that Christmas is good news of great joy for all people. There's two things today that I want to pick out of our passage that I want to share with you. First one is this. Christmas interrupts the ordinary, and Christmas introduces the supernatural. Christmas interrupts the ordinary. Let's go back to our passage. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. So these blue-collar workers were working the night shift, just minding their own business, doing their job. And their ordinary life was interrupted by something extraordinary, because that's what Christmas does. Christmas interrupts the ordinary to bring us something extraordinary. It says, An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Stop right there. We have to stop and try to acknowledge what we just read. An angelic being from heaven appeared out of nowhere to them. And not just that, but the glory of God was shining around them. The glory of God, the manifestation of his goodness and his righteousness. We have no idea what that was like. How bright that was. How colorful that was. How beautiful that was. How intimidating and overwhelming that was. It's no wonder that the angel had to first say, fear not. In fact, we're reading uh, the gospel's uh, account of Luke. Luke recorded this. He recorded this in the original Greek. We can't always translate the Greek word for word because sometimes it just doesn't make sense. But if we were to do that in this passage, Luke actually wrote that the shepherds were afraid with great fear. That's why some of your translations may just say that they were terrified. This was a terrifying, terrifying moment. One of the darker sides of me is, for me, the funniest thing in the world is when people get scared. Do you know what I'm talking about? When people get startled, that is the funniest thing in the world to me. Not when I get scared, of course, but when other people get scared, it's hilarious. And I gotta imagine this was the king's scenario of that of all time. These guys were out in the dark, minding their own business with a bunch of animals, and an angel of the Lord just appeared with God's glory. I can't imagine the freak out moment for these guys. But this moment that happened changed everything. And it should change everything for everyone who is ever going to live. Christmas interrupts the ordinary because that's what Christmas does. But there's a problem. We want normalcy. The heart's desire is for normalcy. We want things to be normal. In this 2020 COVID Christmas, isn't that what we're all longing for? We just want it to go back to normal. We want our normal lives back. We want things to be the way 
that they were. 2020 has reminded us of this fact that we as a people, we crave normalcy. We want to, we want to go back to our ordinary lives. We want it to be how it was. I wanted to go back to when I made a decision, everybody was happy. Just kidding, that's never the normalcy for me. 2020 has reminded us that we crave normalcy, but Christmas reminds us we're not meant for that. Christians in the house, hear me. You are not meant to be normal as the world defines normalcy. There's a reason the Bible calls Christians aliens and foreigners of this world. There's a reason that the term for Christians are the called out ones. We don't get to hide in the shadows. We're the ones who are called out with a message of proclamation of the gospel that is good news for all time, for all people. We were not meant for normalcy. And Christmas reminds us of that. But they also, that we're also reminded of another problem. We want normalcy, but we also want control. These shepherds didn't ask for this. They were out minding their own business. They didn't sign up for this. They didn't schedule this. Sort of like how this year has gone. This moment was beyond them. But praise be to God that even though they weren't in control, someone much greater was. And he was disrupting things so that his plan could come to fulfillment I think some of us are okay if things are disrupted as long as it means that things are better for us. That might not be the immediate case. God's disruption of your life may take it for a turn that you think is worse for a while, but his plan is unfolding in your life. Let's continue with our our passage. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. The angel says, Fear not, For behold, I bring you good news. It's like the angel was saying to them, I know you're afraid, but don't be. Right now, in this very moment, something amazing is happening. And Peace Church, let me tell you this right now. I still believe that's true. I still believe that something amazing is happening. I still believe that Jesus is doing a good work in this world. I still believe that. Christmas interrupts the normal. It reminds us that we're not in control, but Christmas also introduces the supernatural. The supernatural. Jesus, the Son of Mary, is the Son of God, whose supernatural announcement reminds us that Christmas itself does introduce the supernatural. How could we live normal lives when we are the people who walk with angels? When we are the people who operate in the level of the supernatural, that we operate in a level that is actually beyond us. But the problem is, is we don't see it. We don't see it. Why? Why? Because we have tamed the imagery. We as a people, we have tamed the imagery. These shepherds get a supernatural encounter when the angel visited them, and it terrified them. But when I look at the, the uh, nativity scenes around town, when I look at the own ones that I have in my house, it's hardly fear-inducing. In fact, they're actually quite comforting. Here's some of the pictures of the nativity scenes around the Kimmel household. So this is one that my grandmother actually painted. She painted these. We have these set up all year round in, my, in one of our display cabinets. Um, there's, you see the angel there. She's actually quite beautiful. Here's the one we get out in Christmas time and, and display. Uh, as you can see, I've had to super glue her hands because they broke off a couple times. Normal looking angel doesn't look too intimidating. Here's the one that we set up on our front porch. Here we got uh, baby Jesus here, all nice and cuddly. We got Joseph, his dad. We got Mary, his mom. Who's this? Is this his aunt? Oh no, that's an angel. Hardly terror invoking. See, we have tamed the imagery of Christmas. If you want to see an actually historic, accurate nativity scene, what you would see is Joseph and Mary filthy and exhausted. 
You wouldn't see a nice, cuddly little Jesus. He'd probably be screaming because he was born in a barn. I think some, maybe some mothers need to hear this right now. End of the day, you may not feel as clean as what you want. You may not feel like your kids are behaving like you want. But here's what I want you to know about Mary and Joseph. Yes, they were filthy. Yes, they were tired. But hear me, but they were completely in God's will. They were completely in God's will. We've tamed the imagery, so it's no wonder that we've lost the supernatural significance of Christmas. We've tamed the imagery, and thus we have minimized the miraculous. We've minimized the miraculous. See, these shepherds got a supernatural encounter when the angel visited them. But listen to me. They also got a supernatural encounter when they visited Jesus. Jesus, the newborn king, is God and flesh combined into the one human baby that we call Jesus Christ. We call this act the incarnation when deity and humanity was wedded into Jesus We call it the incarnation, and it's a miracle on a scale that should not only humble us, in a lot of ways, it should unnerve us. When we think about Jesus leaving heaven to come to earth as that baby boy, we probably should have an angel tell us, fear not, because that's how big and intimidating and miraculous this miracle is. Was Jesus bridged the divide between heaven and earth, and the manger was the bridge that he walked across to do this. I think it was last, last summer, maybe it was the summer before, but last summer uh, it was my day off, and my wife and I, we like to sleep in on our days off. Uh, my kids don't always like to sleep in. And so this one morning, they wanted to get up, we wanted to stay sleeping. It was my day off, so I was like, you know what, time for a little electronic babysitter, if you know what I mean. So we walked out. I walked out. Uh, good husband let my wife sleep. I walked out, uh, saw a pile of DVDs sitting there on the counter, grabbed one. It looked like a cartoon, so I just threw the DVD, shut it, told the kids, be quiet, don't fight. Mom and dad are sleeping. Well, about an hour later, I got up and I came out, made a cup of coffee, walked into the living room, watched saw what they were watching. It was the middle of the summer, but I had put in a Christmas DVD. In fact, I had put in the uh, Nickelodeon Nick Jr. Holiday Special. And this is a, a DVD where you've got the holiday episodes of Dora the Explorer, The Backyardigans, and of course, Blue's Clues. Now, uh, Blue's Clues is about this little dog, and his name, her name is Blue, And what they're doing, they were teaching Blue about all the holidays. This is the part that I walked in on, and I'm watching my kids watch this. They're teaching Blue about all the different holidays around December. And it gets to Christmas. I'm thinking, oh, we'll we'll see what, you know, my theological mind goes into overdrive here. Let's see how they do with this. Uh, It was Winona Ryder, um, who, I think it was Winona Ryder, who said, uh, Christmas is, uh, at Christmas we celebrate Someone's, someone's birth, a very special person's birth. And they go, oh, so Christmas is, a, Christmas is a special birthday party. And they go, yes, Christmas is a special birthday party. Okay, when they move on, and Blue goes to the next person, and they find out about Hanukkah. And this person goes, Hanukkah is when there was this lamp, and there was only enough oil to keep the lamp lit for one day, but the lamp stayed lit for eight days. And they go, for eight days? Oh, that's a miracle. And they go, yes, yes, Hanukkah is the miracle of lights. So I'm sitting with my cup of coffee and I just realized my kids just learned that Hanukkah is a miracle, but Christmas is a birthday. And I'm thinking, something's wrong here. But then you have to take some time to do some self-reflection because here's the reality. If you don't judge Blue's Clues if you don't treat Christmas like the miracle it is. We are minimizing the miraculous. If you're not treating Christmas as the miracle that it historically truly is, then you are just treating it as another holiday. As Christians, we have lots of titles and terms that we use for Jesus. Namely, Savior Christ and Lord. It's common for Christians to use these 
titles for Jesus, we see these all over Scripture. Jesus applies these to himself even. But what's interesting about the passage we're reading today is that this is the only time in Scripture where we see the, where we see the titles Savior, Christ, and Lord all together at once. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Savior who is Christ the Lord. This is why Christmas cannot be just another holiday on the shelf of December. This is why Christians cannot be minimizing the miracle of Christmas. We can't just hear this and hear another story. We have to imagine this scene. But I'll be honest, when I hear these words, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, my mind goes somewhere immediately, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you that you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, and lying in a manger, and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude that, do you know where my mind immediately goes when I hear that? (laughs) Linus, from the Charlie Brown Christmas special. Now hear me, I am very much not ragging on the Charlie Brown Christmas special. It's amazing. In fact, as the lead pastor here, I am encouraging every family to watch this at least twice this Christmas season. It's wonderful, but here's the reality. If we hear these words and we immediately go to a cartoon, we're minimizing the miraculous of what happens with these words. And suddenly, out of nowhere, this lone angel was surrounded by a multitude of the heavenly hosts. It's kind of an odd phrase, isn't it? What does that even mean, a multitude of the heavenly hosts? A multitude, we know what that word means, it's just a great, great number but what is the heavenly host? Kind of an interesting word. They weren't having a cocktail party. Host is another word for army. It's an old word for army. So we talk about the heavenly host. We're talking about members. A great amount of the angelic army of heaven was here. Because this was not just a, this was not just a holy event. This was an official royal event of heaven. You see, just as soldiers today will salute the president, what we have here is the army of angels announcing the glorious birth of the king of the world. And I dare you, I dare you to try to stand there and imagine what was happening. I dare you to try just to be right next to those shepherds and see this happening. Don't just hear a story or see a cartoon. Try to be there in this real historical moment with real dirt under your feet and the real cold night sky around you. Try to imagine what happened here. Try to take this in. See, this was not just life altering for these shepherds. This was life defining. Then This didn't just change the direction of their lives. This changed their DNA. They became different people because of this experience because that's what Christmas does. And if you truly understand what is happening in this moment, if you truly realize the historical, miraculous significance of this moment, I think you'll be changed in the same way. So as we consider this, we have to understand this, that the true meaning of Christmas is not that we are extra charitable this time of year. The true meaning of Christmas is that the Savior has been born into the world. So as we look at this encounter between the angels and the shepherds, and as we consider what was brought, what news was brought with these words, fear not, let me give you three things to take home with you this Christmas season. And uh, I'm just going to tell you, they're drawing from the three titles that we see given to Jesus. First thing is this, is fear not, Christ left heaven to come to us. Christ left heaven to come to us. In his very own words, Jesus says in John chapter 6, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. You see, the reason that Jesus got a heavenly announcement is because he is from heaven. He is the Son of God. He is the Christ. That's how we say it in Greek. The, the, the Jews, the Hebrews would have said Messiah. Either way, it's the same Name. It's the same term. It both means the anointed one, the one given to us and called by God to be, to bring and himself be the good news of great joy for all people. There's a beloved parable in the Bible. Maybe you're familiar with it. It's later on in the chapter, uh, it's later on in chapter 15 of Luke. 
And Jesus is telling this story. He talks about how the good shepherd has a flock of sheep. And the good shepherd will leave this flock of 99 sheep. He will leave that flock to go and seek and save the one sheep who is lost. It's a powerful, beautiful story. But here's, here's what we do with that story. As we do with every Bible verse. We make it about us. We start saying, oh, I'm that lost sheep. Oh, Jesus left the 99 to come to me, to come and seek and save me. Yes, he did. That's true. But in, in that, do you understand that journey that he went on from leaving the 99 to come to save you? There is a lot going on there that we cannot skip over. This is not just about you. This is about the journey that the shepherd takes to seek and save that one. Jesus Christ, God the Son, was seated in heaven at the right hand of the throne of God, commanding the angels, all of heaven. He left that to come to earth, to be born in the most humble place, a barn. In the most humble estate, a baby. So that he could live an entire human life. Perfect. Perfectly obedient to God. Perfectly loving to his neighbor. So that he could live this perfect life. So that he could be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. That's what Jesus did when he left the 99 to come and seek and save you. And I promise you, and I guarantee if you were the only one that he would ever have saved, he would have still done it. Jesus left heaven to come and save us. When you look at that little ceramic baby in your nativity set, you have to be reminded of the journey that the shepherd was on to save you. Jesus continues with this very passage. He goes on to say, For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life. This is salvation. I'm going to tell you right now, Jesus goes on that long of a journey, that monumental of a journey to seek and save you. He's not going to leave salvation up to you. Is he going to save you? He's going to do it. See, we think salvation is about us living a good life. No, no, that's what we do in response to our salvation. Not in order to receive it. Jesus is the one who saves us. And this is what salvation is. That we would have eternal life with the one who is himself eternal. So fear not. Christmas is that Jesus left heaven to come and save you. Also fear not. The child born to die is the Savior who will be raised to life. The child born to die is the Savior who will be raised to life. See, even Jesus' birth foreshadows his death. Look at these passages with me. And this will be a sign for you that you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. That baby would grow up to be a man who would live and die on our behalf. And he died on a cross and look at what the writers of the Bible say to us after Jesus died on the cross. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. And since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. The baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and laid in a manger is our Savior to be wrapped in burial cloths and laid in a tomb. I want you to think of this when you see that nativity set. When you hear our kids so preciously say that Jesus has been born and happy birthday, Jesus. But listen to me. This baby who outgrew the manger will be the savior who would break out of the tomb. Jesus was clear through his whole life that this is why he came. He came to die for the sins of the world. He constantly would tell his disciples this. 
But he was equally clear that even though he came to die, that he was going to rise again so that he could show the world that he would fully and truly and finally triumph over Satan, sin, and death. And because he rose, he will raise us to life. I, I just love Christ. The things he says, just no one else says. Listen to what he says in John 10. He says, no one takes my life from me. I lay it down of my own accord. I have the authority to lay it down, and I have the authority to take it up again. And Jesus has this authority. And because he has this authority, he's in control. And so let me close out with one final point that I think is very timely for us here in this very disheveled 2020. Fear not, you were not in control to begin with, but the Lord is. This year has seemed out of control, but here's the truth. It's only out of your control. It's only out of my control. I know the one who is in complete control. Fear not, you were not in control to begin with, but the Lord is. My three younger kids are in the toddler and little kid stage, and they can now, all of them, articulate what what scares them, what makes them afraid. And when the darkness and the uncertainty of the night is overwhelming for them and they cry out for me, do you know what I do? I go to them, and I hold them, and I tell them that I'm here, and I tell them that I'm not going to let them go. And I hope you understand that God does the same thing for you. When the darkness of our sin and loneliness is overwhelming, remember that Christmas has come. So cry out to God and see that he is already there. Would you please stand up with me? God sent his army of angels to declare to the shepherds and to the world that the Savior has been born, that he has a plan for his people and he's bringing it to fulfillment. And so when things seem out of control, he never is. So fear not. Let's pray. God of glory, Jesus, our Savior and Holy Spirit, our comforter, we thank you that you would interrupt our ordinary lives and put us on a much better and more glorious path. Father, maybe not an easier one, but one that would bring more glory to you and in the end, more good to us. And I pray that you would do that for everyone here this Christmas. I pray, Father, that you would do this for their good and for your glory. And I pray that we are people who would be introduced and would walk in the supernatural. Lord, the world is increasingly against our message. So, Father, I pray that we can show them something in our words and our actions that they can't deny. That we would be the people who would walk with angels even as we walk with our Savior. And Lord, even though this world seems out of control, we know that you hold not just the world in your hands, but you hold us. Glory to God in the highest. Amen.